Hello everyone, it's Milker John. Today I am going to read a 66061, The Fish Field Trip, Chapter 3. Fritz pulled the lever and our tiny bus fish zoomed away just in time as the powerful jaws of the parrot fish snapped shut behind us. Looking back, we could see the coral we had been hiding in getting crushed into dust. The parrot fish didn't even notice us, it just kept munching. Phew, I said. Our bus fish grew back to normal fish size so we could continue our tour of the reef. All around us, every surface seemed to be alive and wiggling with the current. Fish flitted away as we approached while snails, logs, and tiny crabs ignored us and searched for things to eat. We wandered through the reef, sticking close to the coral so we would have a place to hide if necessary until we came to a patch of green fuzzy stuff. What kind of coral is that? Phoebe asked. That's not coral, that's alger, said the freeze. Not the very, very small kind that lives inside coral, doll. This alger is a kind of seaweed, but what is the alger growing on? Isn't that coral? Alger grows on it, yes, but not in, not in it. This kind of alger is actually bad for coral. It can grow over a reef and choke the coral polyps. You mean that's killer alger? Said Keisha. It can be. It's usually not a problem, though, because fish eat the alger. So there is a healthy balance, said the freeze. But if there aren't enough fish left to eat the alger, algae can grow out of control and kill the corals. There's plenty of fish here, I said. So how come this one patch of alger grew so tall? Look out, Phoebe called. Small blue fish was racing toward us. And it looked, it looked mad. It started nipping at the bus fish's fins like a guard dog. The fish clearly wanted us to go away. It wasn't going to take no for answer. Take no for an answer. What's its pro what is its problem? I said as a bus fish turned tail and sped away. We didn't do anything and it can't be trying to eat us. Smaller than we are, when we were a safe distance away, we turned back around to watch. That uh, damsel fish, also known as a farmer fish, Wanda said he was just guarding its elder farm. It thought we were after its crop. Did you say its farm? said Carlos. You mean that fish is growing elder on purpose, like a farmer? Yes, damsel fish actually raise elder for food. They'll chase away anything that tries to eat it. Even the fish much bigger than much bigger than themselves. I did my report on damsel fish, but I never thought I would see one in action. She started writing rapidly in her notebook. We watched as a small crab crawled over the coral to pluck some alger and the damsel fish. He shooed it away, shooed it away. Then it swam over to an animal that looked like a small pin cushion. Watch this, said Wanda. It's going after that sea urchin. My mouth dropped open in surprise as the little damsel fish picked up the sea urchin by its spines, dragged it off the coral reef, and dumb, dumped it. Then the fish went after another sea urchin and started breaking off its long black spine. It sure was tough, but then suddenly the damsel fish stopped and turned around. Uh oh, here comes trouble. A whole gang of bright blue and yellow fish swooped down on the damsel fish's garden. The damsel fish defleeted everywhere, nipping at the intruders. But he couldn't fight them all at once. The blue and yellow fish kept chomping down on the alger. The damsel fish attacked furiously until the raiders finally zipped away. By then its elder of farm looked like it had been trampled by an entire class of fourth graders. 
holy cow, Carlos said. What were those? Certain fish, said Wanda. They love algae too, though some of the fish are pretty tough, but there's not much they can do when they are outnumbered. Will the damsel fish stir up now? Asked Keisha anxiously. Don't worry, elder plants grow re really fast. It'll all grow back. And remember, the surgeon fish need to eat too. So I'm just curious, but is there any special reason they are called surgeon fish? Good question, Arnold. Miss Frizzle said with a grin. Surgeon fish get the names from the two sharp blades on their sides, just in front of the tail. They can slice right into other fish or into person if you're not careful. Really? Well, I don't see any blade, Carlos said, pressing his nose to the window. They are folded up like switch blade, said the freeze. If you want to see the blades, we'll have to get closer. That's all right, really. I don't need to see the blades, Arnold said hurriedly. Watch what happens when it thinks we're going to attack it. Miss Frizzle said a voice filled with excitement. We edged closer to the surgeon fish and suddenly two blades popped out of its sides near the tail. Did you see that? Incredible, isn't it? Said the freeze. Suddenly the surgeon fish swung its tail toward us and a hard, sharp blade scraped against our window. We all screamed. The surgeon fish to flick its tail at us again, and I could see the sharp, shiny points on the blaze. What are those things made of? Anyway, I am. They are spine, like the ones in its fins, Wanda said. Only these are as sharp as razor blades. I'm glad we are in here, not out there. I don't want to see them any closer. Me neither, said Wanda. Those blades could definitely slice a person's flesh. I sure hope they can slice through school bus windows. Because here he comes again, said Ralphie. I guess we really should be moving on, Free said reluctantly. A bus fish swam up, and when we looked, when you looked back, the surgeon fish had calmed down again. Hugh, for a second there, I thought we were finished. Carlos said everyone groaned as we continued our tour through the reef and noticed there were a lot more animals there than just corals and fish. I saw colorful crabs, shrimp, starfish, and lots of very pretty shell. Boy, it's like Halloween down here. I knew what he meant. Many of the creatures we were passing looked like the versions of animals I had seen before, but dressed in bright costume. Miss Frizzle pointed out uh, a reef lobster, which looked like a regular lobster, except its white shell was covered with lavender spot. Then we saw some the harlequin shrimps, which looked like a small crabs, dressed as a polka dotted clown. Suddenly I saw something I recognized. Hey, I know what those are, I said, pointing at what looked like a bush waving in the breeze. These are called the sea fans. They are a kind of coral. All the information from my report suddenly came flooding back to me. I had drawn the sea fans after seeing a photograph of their hundreds of colorful branching arms. I couldn't wait to draw them again. My new picture would be 10 times better after seeing the sea fans alive and moving. Those are corals, said Wanda. They don't look like the corals we saw before. Those were hard corals, I said. Sea fans are soft corals. They don't make limestone reefs like hard corals. They have skeletons inside the bodies instead. They look softer, all right? They are swishing around like plants. We cruise up to a pink sea fan. Its branches waved with the current Why is this so flat? Keisha asked. It works like a net, I said. Water passes through it, but the stuff floating in the water 
gets caught in the branches. You mean it's a trap? Rafi asked. I nodded. The current pushed us closer toward the sea fan. Arnold gurfed nervously. Nervously. Many sea fans are called uh, the Gorgonians, the Frees said cheerfully, ignoring the danger. They are named after a snake-haired monster from a Greek myth. Can anyone guess why these pretty little sea fans are named after a monster? She asked. Well, for one thing, each of those branches has a deadly stinger on it, I said. But shouldn't we? Excellent. Good work, Tim. If it's such a deadly monster, do we have to get so close? Arnold asked. How else will we see it eat? Miss Frizzle answered. I held my breath as she steered the bus fish closer to the sea fan. As we got closer, we were amazed to see a bunch of skinny animals shaped like stars with their arms wound around the branches. Is a sea fan eating those star animals? I asked. Miss Frizzle shook her head. The sea fan is not really dangerous to big animals, she said. It is mostly teeny tiny floating things called plankton. Those brittle stars live right up there on the sea fan, but they can catch plankton too. I peered closer at the sea fan. I was almost disappointed that it wasn't more deadly. I thought Tim said the branches can sting. Rap said they can, said the freeze, but the stingers are mostly for catching plankton. Not big fish like us. The sea fans don't contain algae, so they catch plankton for food. These species stingers are strong. Not like, say, other sea animals. Did you say an enemy? No, anemon, anemone. The freeze answer, they are animals related to corals. The stingers and their tentacles are so strong that they can kill a fish. You know, we don't need to see that, said Arnold. I think we got the idea just fine with the Gorgonians, but we have to, DA said. My report was about clownfish. Yeah, clownfish sounds great, Arnold said, perking up. Let's look for one of those and forget the uh, animals. DA laughed. Sorry, Arnold, she said. I doubt we'll see a clownfish without an animal. They live together, but I thought see Animals killed fish, Phoebe said. Most fish, yeah, but hey, look, there's an animal now. The A said, let's see if there's a clownfish too. The sea animal had a short, stubby body with hundreds of pink, wiggly tentacles sticking out the top. It looked like a living piece of shank carpet. A shag carpet. Watch what happens when we go up close, Miss Fisher said. Arnold sighed. We swam closer and closer until our bus fish touched the sea anemone's tentacle. And suddenly they, they grabbed us. Chapter 4. Through the windows of the bus fish, I could see the sea anemone's pink tentacles and closing around us. It was like we were being gripped by a hundred fingered hand, and the fingers had glue on them. The magic school fish strained and struggled to pull away, but the tentacle just stretched without letting go. More and more tentacles closed around us until they covered the whole window. It's a good thing we are bus we had a bus fish, not a real fish. Although the stingers would have already finished us off, the A said, but somehow that didn't make me feel too lucky. We were still trapped. Finally, Miss Frizzle the flip the lever and the bus fish roared into action one by one. Animon's tentacles lost the grip, had to let go. At last, we tore loose and everybody cheered. Whoopee, wasn't that exciting, kids? Miss Fisher said, want to do it again? No, we all shouted. We circled back toward the animon, but this time we stayed. I save distance away. That's how the sea animal eats, the freeze explained. There's a kind of mouth in the middle where it pulls in its prey. After being stung by those tentacles, 
Most other animals couldn't struggle free like we did. You mean the animal was trying to eat us? Arnold gulped. Oh yeah, said the freeze. Each tentacle has thousands of stinging cells that shoot out tiny needles full of venom. Good thing they couldn't reach us in here. Eh? We never had poison needle shot at us in my old school, Phoebe said. Look, there's a clown fish. To our amazement, funny looking orange and white fish was nestled among the, uh, the anemone's tentacles, totally unharmed. How come it's not getting hurt? I asked. Clownfish is coated with a slimy mucus. Mucus. So the anemone can sting it, said the A. That's where the clownfish lives, right there with the anemone. Yup. Why would it live there? Ralphie asked. For protection mainly. The animal is like the clownfish's personal bodyguard. Also, it gets to eat part of what the animal catches. Clownfish sounds like a real pest. Living with the animal and eating its food, said Carlos. Not at all. They both help each other because the clownfish chases away the animal's enemy. It's a classic case of uh, mutualism because both sides benefit. Added Miss Frizzle, like the coral with the alger inside it, I said. Exactly. Symbiotic relationships can occur anywhere, but they are especially common here. Everything lives together in such close quarters on the reef that they have developed some ingenious ways to share space. See that sponge over there? You'd never believe all the things living inside it. Sponges aren't alive, are they? Arnold said nervously, yet. Down here, sponges are animal. But they still soak up things, just like the plastic sponges in your kitchen. The bus fish cruise over to a bright red sponge. As we came closer, we could see it was filled with holes. Now, can you just tell us about the sponge this time from over here? I tell you when I can show you, Miss Frizzle said. Magic school fish started to shrink until it was smaller than a pea. Then the freeze turned off the engine, but we kept going forward. The closer we got to the sponge, the faster we were moving. It felt like we were being pulled toward it. I could feel the whole bus fish start to shake. We're getting sucked inside, Phoebe said, and away we go. We passed through one of the many openings in the sponge. The moving water carried us into a long, winding passageway. Sides of the tunnel were lined with what looked like uh, little hairs. They were paddling like mad to keep the water moving through the sponge. There were small chambers all around us. And almost everyone has some kind of animal living in it. It was like we had stumbled into a tiny underwater apartment building. There was more fish and some and crops, crabs and others. Then we got to a section packed with tiny white things that looked like an insect. What the heck are those, said Phoebe. There were hundreds of them. A colony of shrimps, Miss Frizzle said. But these are not your usual shrimps, they are all related and live together as a giant family, like a colony of bees. Those shrimps so sure are shrimpy, said Carlos. They are all the smallest ants. Why do they have bigger claws than the rest? Rafi asked, pointing to a group of shrimp in front of us. Each shrimp in the colony has a certain jump. And those are the, the guards. What are they guarding against? It seems pretty safe in here. True, we are out of reach of large fish. But all the predators can fit in here, said, said, she said. Like what? Like that, Keisha screamed. A bushy, bristly beast was squeezing down the passageway. Oh, what luck, a bristle worm, said Miss Frizzle. It's come to hunt. I wonder what those guards will do. Escaping those shrimps was a no small task. The hungry worm walked its way through the passageway. The feeling around for something to eat. The closer it got to our bus fish, the more spiny bristles we saw. 
its whole body was covered with them. Most of the small animals scurried away, but three guard shrimp scurried over to the worm and started nipping at its fillers with their claws. The worm started backing away. Hooray, they are protecting the colony, Miss Frizzle said, but the guards weren't done. While the bristle worm retreated, uh, shrimp turned and started pinching the fins of the magic school fish. More guards were pulling down the passageway to join the attack. Let's get up, get out of here, I yelled. Miss Frizzle turned the ignition key and put a foot on the gas. A boss fish tore loose from the claws of the guard shrimps and took off down a tunnel. The shrimps chased us until we swept out of the sponge into open water. Phew, it seems like everything is trying to eat everything else down here. I'm glad that's over with. Um, Tim, Carlos said, I don't think it's, it's exactly over. I looked in the direction he was pointing. We were face to face with the worst monster we had, uh, we had encountered yet. The end.